All right, Algebra 1, uh, good morning, or good afternoon, good evening, whenever you guys are watching this video. Um, this is officially our first video for a lecture, and um, I know normally during first period, uh, we would be uh, taking some prayer requests, I would definitely be praying for you guys, so uh, if you don't mind, I'm just going to do a quick prayer, get us started on the right foot. Heavenly Father, continue to watch over all my students, bless them, keep them safe, continue to watch over me, my family, and all of the Coastal family. Amen. Um, all right, guys. So, um, here we go. Just like normal in class, we got the whiteboard, we got some notes. Let's go through it together. So, we are starting chapter 10. We have section 1 titled Graph. AX squared plus C, and you guys should remember uh, A right there being in front of X squared is going to be a coefficient, and C right over here, it has no variable next to it, so it's going to be a constant, okay? Um, all right, so this equation again, AX squared plus C, the A is going to be determining in the graph, either how skinny or how wide the parabola is. And just in case you don't know, a parabola makes these shapes up here. All right, so these two shapes up here, if A is a positive, it's going to make a parabola that looks like a little smiley face. If A is a negative, going to make a parabola that looks like a little frown. Now one thing I want to specify, this goes for every video that I post. Um, feel free to pause it at any point in time to copy down the notes. Um, obviously re-watch all these videos as many times as need be to get all the necessary information down. All right, so there's a key concept chart, page 607. I'm going to want you guys to copy down. Um, and then every time we make a graph using AX squared plus C, we're going to use these same values. All right, these values right here would be X is negative 2, X is negative 1, 0, positive 1, and positive 2. So you would be inputting these values in for X for every single problem. Um, before we do a quick example, just want to make sure that you guys have a couple terms here. The axis of symmetry, that would be the line that cuts a parabola perfectly in half. So essentially, symmetry, getting two equal sides. And then the vertex, that's another key term. The vertex is going to be either the very lowest point when you have a smiley face parabola, or it's going to be the very highest point when you have a frown face parabola. So the vertex would be right there. Okay, let's take a look at page 606 and 607. We're gonna be attempting to get through numbers one through six. And so again, if you want, you can pause the video, go ahead and copy those down. I'm gonna be erasing that and then doing these problems right up here, okay? All right, let's take a look at the first one. Y equals negative 4X squared. And our directions here is going to basically be saying graph it and compare it to the parent function. Now, whenever they say a parent function, a parent function is just this right here. So in other words, there is no coefficient except for the one that's always there. All right, so let's give a try here with this being our equation. These are all the values that we're going to plug in for x. So you would have a negative 4. You would plug in a negative 2. You would square it. Negative 2 squared is going to be 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. Now, these values that come out are going to be your y values. So that would make a point of negative 2 comma negative 16. Plug in a negative 1, square it, you get a positive
positive 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. Negative 4, plug in a 0, square it, you get 0, times a negative 4 is a 0. So the points that we're looking at that we created here, negative 1 and negative 4, the point we're looking at here we created is 0 and 0. All right. Well, that's a nice easy one. And then when you plug in a positive, negative 4 times 1 squared, that's 1. Negative 4, that's going to also be a negative 4. And then another, negative 4, plug in 2, square it. You should see a little pattern here. You're going to get negative 16. Now, something that you guys will notice is you should have patterns every single time you're plugging in these values. That's going to be very helpful to you to know if you had numbers up here for a negative 2, you should get the exact same answer when you plug in a positive 2. So that's going to be one of your little checkpoints. I try to do that during the lectures. Checkpoints are going to be something that you could say, if I did it right up here, I should have gotten the same answer down here. If you don't get that same answer, then something went wrong. Okay. So now all we're going to have to do is graph these four points right into our graph. Okay. So if we were to go over a negative 2, this is our x-axis, our y-axis. Now I know negative 16, uh, not going to be pleasant to go all the way down there. So we're just going to say right there, that's our negative 16 point, just to save some time. So we go negative 2, go down, there's our negative 16. Now if we go negative 1, we go left 1, we go down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. We'd be roughly right there. 0 is right at 0. And don't forget that right there in the middle, that is called the origin, 0, 0. And then let's go positive 1. And that again would be at the same value as negative 1, which is negative 4 here. And then let's go over to a positive 2, which then takes us all the way back down to a negative 16, and it's going to be creating, I'm sure you guys know how amazing of an artist I am, we got this parabola shape, as great as that may look there, it's going to be a frown, and that is because A was a negative value, so see how that goes right there. Okay, let's move on, take a look at number two. All right, number two, we have one third x squared. Now, a lot of you guys don't like fractions. Some of you don't like decimals. You're going to have to deal with those using your multiplication. You still got to think top times the top, bottom times the bottom. So let's plug in our values. You have one third, and that's multiplied by a negative two squared. So negative two squared makes a positive 4. Now, let's see how that perfectly works out as 1 third times 4 over 1, creating a 4 over 3. So that means when we plug in a negative 2, we get out a positive 4 over 3. Now, that does tell us that when we plug in a positive 2, we're going to get the exact same thing. So let's skip ahead and just go ahead and do that. Now, when we plug in a negative 1, you have 1 third. And negative 1 squared, what's that going to be? It's going to end up being a positive 1. So we're going to erase that, save some space. And that's just 1 over 1, giving us positive one-third. So that means when we plug in a negative one, we get out a positive one-third. When we plug in a positive one, we get out a positive one-third. When you plug in zero, 
you'll see zero squared is zero, and zero times anything is zero. So that's gonna give us zero comma zero. Now, all we're looking at here is drawing our graph, and we have a negative two, one, two, and let's think, four thirds is a little bit bigger than one, so that's gonna be one, two, so we're gonna go negative two, up one, and a little bit more. And if we were to go positive two, we'd go right two, up one, and a little bit more. So we're right there, zero, zero, and then let's cover in our negative one, and one third going up, so let's just estimate that's about right there, just barely up a little bit. Same thing for positive one, barely up a little bit. And it's going to make a smiley face, and it's a wider smiley face. So what does that tell you? That when you have a fraction coefficient, you will make a wider parabola. When you have, like we did at the first problem, a whole number coefficient, it will make a slightly skinnier parabola. All right. Now, I'm gonna make the executive decision to probably not do all six problems. I think it's gonna to take too long. So we're gonna jump ahead and we're gonna take a look at number five on page 607. That's gonna be y equals negative five x squared plus one. All right, the reason why I wanted to do this is to show you again what happens with negative coefficients. Negative a, going to make a frown, so we already know that. But we haven't dealt with a c value like we had here up in our title. So this value right here, the c makes the parabola move up if positive. You'll notice that's positive. If it were a negative, it would make the parabola move down. Okay? So... Let's plug in our values. You got negative two. So negative two squared is positive four. Positive four times negative five is going to make a negative 20 plus one is a negative 19. So that means when you plug in negative two, you're going to get out that negative 19 which means when we plug in a positive two, we're gonna get out the same, negative 19. Now I'm gonna jump ahead and show you what zero does, because you're gonna see in the past, zero plugged in equal to zero out, but it's not this time because of that plus one. So when we, just to save some space here, when we plug in a zero and square it, you're gonna see zero squared is zero, great times negative five, still zero, but plus one is where you're looking at actually getting out a one. So that means when you plug in zero on this problem, you will get a positive one out for your y value. All right, now again, just to save a little bit of time here, let's skip out on that negative one, positive one. You can use those exact same steps that we've been doing for the negative two and positive two. And we're going to graph this now. So let's go ahead and graph negative 2 and negative 19. Again, saving on time. Let's just call this down here our negative 19. So we would go left 2, remember x, y, and then go all the way down to negative 19. Our positive 2 would take us again all the way down to negative 19. And then our zero value, this is actually going to bump us up right here, where y is one. You'll notice negative five, a negative a value makes a frown, and we are still making a frown shape right here. So, there we go. All right, now that pretty much concludes this video. And uh, I'm sure that I'll work out some kinks. We'll get these videos a little bit shorter. I apologize for that being slightly long, but if we were in class, that would be about the time for the lecture. And um, love you guys. Care about you guys. 
and uh, I hope you're all doing well.